Hello friends, welcome back to another Lightroom video. I'm having a lot of fun using the masking and color tools in Lightroom because they're fantastic, I guess, and uh, they're super useful, they're super accurate, and it allows me to really control my image in a way that can be difficult to do without using these kinds of tools. So I'm going to dive into that in this video and walk through how I take a photo from kind of a photo to something that I consider really, really nice outcome. Here's the base photo. Now, before I got started, I straightened it a little bit, but the big thing I did is I went into the generative erase over here. I used this Gen AI erase to get rid of that really big branch because using the regular erase and all that sort of stuff wasn't working for me. Gen erase just took care of it and it's darn near perfect. In fact, I'd say it is perfect. So before and after, absolutely very pleased with that. I also, of course, as you can see, did some adjustments in the basic panel before and after with the basic panel. And so that's a little bit of contrast, highlight, shadows, a little bit of clarity, and uh, some temperature and tint, right? So again, before and after. And so that's my base photo, erase, or generase, I should say, and then basic. But now what, what I wanna do is get into the masking, and this is where you start to control the light and the color. Incredibly essential, I think, to every single edit. So I'm gonna start out, open the masking panel, and I'm gonna get a linear gradient. And the first thing I wanna do is drag that right here into the foreground, and I wanna give a little bit of texture and clarity to this area. I like to do that in cityscapes because I like to add a little bit of uh, crunch to anything that's kind of concrete or man-made. It, it gives a little bit of detail, or that appearance of detail. It just makes it a little bit more tangible and real feeling to me. Uh, because let's be honest, the raw files are generally kind of flat. So before and after, it now has a little bit of pop, which I like. Now I'm going to go in and get a color range mask. And these are fantastic. And I talked about this in the last video. But this allows me to really isolate those blues. There you go. There's a lot of blue in this photo. And the nice thing is you have this refine tool. So what I'm going to do is pull this down a little bit. And I'm going to get to about a 37. And as you can see, what that's doing is basically pulling it out of a good bit of that foreground. So that allows me to really isolate that blue. And what I want to do is take the exposure down a little bit. So I'm going to do like a negative 35, 37, and about a negative 14 or so on temperature. And that's just giving me a little bit better looking blue in those areas. So before and current state, a little bit better looking blues and a little bit darker blues, which I like quite a bit. Now, in terms of masking, I use color range masks a lot. They're fantastic. I love them. I talked about that in the last Lightroom video. And the other masking tool that I love is Luminance Range, also known as Luminosity Mask. And one of the things I like to do with those is isolate specific tonal areas, which is, of course, what these are so good at. Let me get that back together. And what I want to do here is get this into the mid-40s, so maybe about like something like that. So maybe there. And then I want to take this one into the high 50s. And what I'm doing is just kind of isolating the midtones. Let me pull this back together. So something about like that. And as you can see, I've really isolated the buildings kind of in the horizon. And of course, Tower Bridge. This is London. I'm sure you figured that out. But the thing I don't like about the luminosity mask here is it's also picking a lot of uh, stuff in the foreground up and including that. I don't want that. So the easy way to do that is this great uh, subtract option. So I'm just going to click subtract and I'm going to subtract with a linear gradient. And then I just come in here and I just remove that area in the foreground. So it doesn't mess up what I did to the benches and it really isolates that area that I really want to isolate, which I've uh, shown you. So now my mask, my luminance range mask is really just applying mostly to the buildings and to the, the bridge, a little bit of the river, which is fine as well. And now that I've done that, I'm going to come in and make a few adjustments. So I'm going to go slightly brighter here, and I'm going to increase the warmth a little bit, about a 10 or something. And then my tint is going to go to about 20, 21. I'm just shifting those tones a little bit. I'm also going to add some texture and clarity because I want to add a little bit of crunch. And that's a great way to isolate those man-made structures. And that's what I've done there. So if you look at the before and after with this mask, the bridge and the buildings have been impacted pretty significantly, right? A little crunchier with the texture and clarity, a little brighter, slightly warmer. So that's all working pretty well. And then one more quick little mask is a linear gradient, and that's gonna be over here in this lower left corner, 
primarily and all I'm doing there is just going to darken that area and so that's going to be like a negative uh, you know about a stop and a half something like that I just want to draw attention away from that area because it's kind of bright and I'd rather you kind of uh, feel like your eye goes kind of into the middle and kind of up to the uh, to the bridge there so that is it for masking I'm going to turn that off but I feel like already we've come a pretty good ways before and after I think we're in good shape and what I want to do now is play a little bit with the color. So there's a lot of tools that I use for that. Color Mixer is a great one. It allows you to come in with this point color option and really focus in on the colors you want to adjust. Now the first color I want to adjust is kind of the orange over here. So I'm going to grab that kind of orange that's in this light and that's there. And what I want to do is shift that hue more to the red. And so that's going to be like a negative high 20s an increase in saturation to the mid to high 30s something about like that so that looks a little bit better before and after just kind of enriches that red and the next thing I want to do is this kind of greenish color up here in this light I don't like that at all and it kind of throws off the look of the bridge to me so I'm going to adjust that pretty significantly that hue is going to go to like a negative 80 so a quite a bit warmer and the saturation is going to come down, so like a negative 15 or 16, something around there. And that's shifted that. If you look up there in that area, again, if you look at the before, you can see it's quite a bit kind of yellow-green. And after now, it's a li little bit more orange, more in line with the orange that's in these other lights. And having done that, I now want to get one more of these, and it's going to be in this blue area. And I'm just going to bring the saturation down slightly, so like a negative 18, 19. And I'm going to darken it slightly as well. It's like a negative 16, 17, something like that. So I just took the blues and made them a little bit darker and a little bit less saturated. So before and after. Now I'm finished with Color Mixer and I'm going to go into Color Grading. Another just fantastic tool and I love how it isolates the different tonal areas. So it kind of does the work for you in terms of figuring out where, in terms of tonal values, you want to make these color adjustments. I love it. I'm going to start in Shadows. And the first thing I'm going to do is make this hue about a 225 and I'm going to take the saturation up to about a 22 23 so something about like that and the luminance is going to come down and that's going to be like a negative 37 38 something about like that so if you look at the before and the after I basically made the shadows bluer and a little bit more saturated and a little bit darker and now I want to go into the midtones and all I'm going to do in the midtones is leave that hue in the red. And I'm going to add a little bit of saturation. Not too much, uh, but that's adding a little bit of color, a little warm color into the midtones. So it's hitting some of the areas like around the bridge and that sort of thing. So before and after with color grading, I think that's worked out really well. And then the final color tool is calibration. I talk about it, I feel like in every video in, uh, that I do in Lightroom, but it's because it's so amazing and so useful. I've gotten to where I'm using it now on essentially every single photo, and this is because I love it. So the hue in the blues is going negative, but the saturation is going positive. So maybe something about like that. And then I'm going to go jump up to the greens, and this one I'm going to go pretty high on the hue adjustment, and the saturation, however, is going to come down. So about a negative uh, 12, 13, something about like that. So you can see how those color tones are shifting. There it is before, and there it is now. A little bit more of a kind of a, a teal and um, orange kind of look a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to go into the reds. And here I'm going to take the hue up to about a 10 or 11, something about like that. And the saturation is going up quite a bit. That's going to go in the mid 40s. And I really like this color look. So again, kind of a teal and orange. But there it is before, and there it is now quite a bit different but I love how that's been able to um, help me uh, kind of accentuate that color look and then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a vignette so you know something kind of slight not too big uh, and not too over the top high feathering because I like that and there we go that has given me tons of control over color and light and all the things I love to edit in a photo and it's because of these wonderful tools in Lightroom before you know, it was early blue hour, and now, obviously, got rid of that tree. Thank you, Gen AI. But that removal is just fantastic because I was having trouble with it with the regular erase tools. But before and after really accentuated the tones and the mood, and that really comes down to controlling light and color with things like luminosity mask, 
color range mask, and then the various color tools, color mixer, color grading, and calibration. You literally can't go wrong using these tools. You get such a massive impact on the photo, and it gives you such perfect control that you end up creating things that maybe you really like. I really like this edit, and uh, that's how it went in this video, my friends. One more time, before and after. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or other ideas, topics in Lightroom you want me to cover, just leave a comment down below. I'll be back really soon. You guys take care. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, adios.